ex-husband steals from our 12-year-old son, but I steal his chance of keeping his job when I talk to his boss. Hi Reddit. I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this but honestly I don't know what else to do. I feel frustrated, powerless and above all betrayed. I'm not looking for legal advice or anything that serious, but I do want to make my ex understand how wrong what he's doing is. But first, let me tell you everything from the beginning so you have a clear idea of why I'm so angry. To start, I'm a single mother. I have a 12-year-old son who means the world to me, and I've been raising him mostly on my own since I divorced his father six years ago. My ex-husband, let's call him Mike, and I were married for five years before everything fell apart. Honestly, it wasn't all bad in the beginning. He was fun, charismatic, and always found ways to make me laugh. But the truth is, he never fully grew up. He was always someone who made impulsive decisions, especially when it came to money. I remember two incidents that marked the beginning of the end. The first was when he decided, without consulting me, to spend $2,000 on an annual subscription to a premium wine service. We didn't even drink that much wine. He said it was a great investment because he was going to learn everything about wine, but he never got past opening a couple of expensive bottles, and the rest we ended up giving away to friends and family. And of course the subscription was forgotten in a corner. The other example that left me stunned was when he bought a jet ski without even having a place to use it. We don't live near a lake or the coast. His logic was that we could take family trips to the nearest lake three hours away. What he never mentioned was that these family trips meant spending even more money on gas, truck rentals and fees to park and use the boat at the lake. In the end, he used that jet ski twice before it started gathering dust in the garage. I don't have a problem with Mike spending his money however he pleases, but the problem was that when he ran out of money, the responsibility of paying bills and buying food fell on me. And frankly, I was fed up. I had spent too long being the only adult in the relationship, and I eventually decided I couldn't go on like that. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life taking care of a man who acted like an irresponsible child. The divorce process was a total disaster. Mike didn't take it well, not at all. Throughout the whole process, he begged me not to leave him. He cried, wrote me letters, and filled me with empty promises that he would change. But I knew he wasn't serious. What really bothered him wasn't that our relationship was ending but that he was losing his personal caretaker. Mike didn't want to be an independent man. He needed someone to keep him in line and manage him. The day we finally got divorced was a mixture of relief and surrealism. The judge had seen all the arguments and evidence, and although most of the time our son was going to be with me, he also ruled that he would spend weekends and some vacation weeks with his father. It was one of the worst decisions for me, not because I wanted to keep my son from seeing his father, but because it was clear Mike wasn't fit to be a responsible father figure. I remember when, during our marriage, Mike left our son at a neighbor's house while he went on a spontaneous two-day trip to Las Vegas with his friends without even telling me. Our son was five years old at the time, and I couldn't stop thinking about how irresponsible he was. But despite my concerns, there was nothing more I could do. The judge didn't see anything too alarming in his behavior, and although I told him about Mike's impulses and poor judgment, apparently, it wasn't enough. I don't feel it was a matter of bias in favor of men or anything like that. I've read enough stories where judges side with women. It was frustrating but I had to accept it. Over time I have to admit Mike has improved as a father at least a little. I won't say he's competing for father of the year, but he's stopped being so impulsive with money, and he seems to have taken on a bit more responsibility. Maybe our divorce was the wake-up call he needed. Now, at least he regularly pays child support and has been more involved in our son's life or so I thought until recently. Let me tell you what really brought me here. It all started with what I thought were simple requests from my son. Like any 12-year-old, my son sometimes asks for things and I don't mind. I understand that part of growing up is wanting new things. When I was a child, I also asked my mom for money to go out or for a toy. As long as it's not an extravagant expense, I think it's normal. First, my son asked me for a baseball bat. It wasn't a problem for me. My son had never shown much interest in sports, and I thought it would be good for him to try something new. But before I bought it, I told him he had to earn it by helping to mow the lawn. He agreed and I thought everything was fine. I bought him the bat, but after that he didn't sign up for the school baseball team or use it at home. Turns out he had taken it to his dad's house, and I never saw it again. Then came the fishing rod. He told me he was going on a fishing trip with a friend and his family which I thought was a good idea. Again I didn't just hand it over for free. I asked him to help clean out the garage before I bought it. He completed the task so I bought the rod. But, just like the baseball bat, it ended up at his dad's house and I never saw it again. And the most frustrating part is, he never even went on that fishing trip he talks so much about. The worst part was when he asked for a video game console, a new and expensive one, along with a particular game. 
For me, this was a significant expense, and I told him that if he really wanted it, he would have to work to save up some money. I suggested he could mow the neighbor's lawns for a few weeks and save up, and then I'd cover the rest. It seemed like a good way to teach him the value of effort, hard work, and the real cost of things. And he did it. My son worked hard, mowing several neighbor's lawns, and in the end, he saved enough money that I was comfortable covering the rest to buy the console. I bought it for him, and part of the deal was that he could only use it on weekends since during the week, he needed to focus on school. It seemed like a good arrangement. But then the same thing happened as with the baseball bat and fishing rod. The console went straight to his dad's house. At first, I didn't think it was a big deal since he was only going to use it on weekends anyway, because part of the deal was that he would focus on his studies during the week. But a few days ago, a friend of mine, who is the wife of one of Mike's friends, told me something that left me shocked. Apparently, her husband had been going over to Mike's house a lot to play video games. I asked her what game they were playing, and when she told me, everything started to make sense. My ex was using our son to get me to buy things he wanted. It all started to click, the baseball bat, the fishing rod, and now the video game console. None of those things were really for my son, they were for Mike. What's worse is that my son had been working to earn these things, only for his father to use them. He was manipulating and using him to get what he wanted. When my son came home on Monday after spending the weekend with his dad, I decided to talk to him about what was going on. I asked him if he had been playing his new game and he said not much. So I asked if his dad had been using it. At first, my son seemed uncomfortable, like he didn't want to say anything, but he eventually confessed. He told me that he couldn't play much because his dad was always using it. He even told me that Mike had bought new games, but when my son wanted to play, his dad wouldn't let him because he was too busy using it. The worst part was when my son admitted that his dad had told him not to say anything to me. Mike had told him that if he did, he'd be punished and wouldn't be allowed to play with the console. Though in reality my son wasn't playing much anyway. He also told me that the other gifts like the bat and the fishing rod were things his dad had convinced him to ask for so they could use them together, but now Mike was the only one using them. I couldn't take it anymore so I decided to confront Mike directly. I went to his house unannounced, and the argument we had was intense, to say the least. I told him I knew what he was doing and that he needed to return all those things so they could be at my house, where our son could use them whenever he wanted. Mike of course refused outright. He said those were things only a father and son could enjoy together, which I thought was a ridiculous excuse. I made it very clear that either he returned everything or he'd have to face the consequences. What are those consequences? Honestly, I'm not sure. I haven't thought of what to do exactly, but I'm so angry that I want to do something to make him feel at least a little of what he's put me through. So here I am, Reddit. I know this isn't enough to go to the police or take serious legal action, but I'm looking for ideas on how to get back at my ex for what he's done. I want to do something that will make him think twice before using our son in this way again. Edit. For those asking if Mike pays child support, yes he does. I don't have any problems in that regard. He's been fairly consistent with payments since the divorce so I have no complaints there. My issue isn't about the money itself but about how he's manipulating our son to get what he wants. It's not fair to him or me. Update 1. First of all, I want to thank everyone for the comments and messages I've received since my last post. You've really given me a lot to think about, and while some advice has been a bit extreme, and in some cases illegal, I appreciate that you've taken the time to read my story and try to help me. There were also simpler suggestions like blocking Mike everywhere but honestly that wouldn't solve anything. Mike isn't harassing me or constantly trying to contact me. Some people suggested getting more creative with my revenge, and while that idea sounds tempting at times I have to be realistic. I'm not going to do anything that could land me in jail or damage my life or my son's. It's not worth ruining myself over someone who clearly doesn't have the same priorities as me. I've received some interesting questions about whether Mike is also irresponsible at work, and I think this is a good direction to take, as it has me seriously thinking about how to handle the situation. The truth is, while he's reasonably responsible at work, at least by Mike's standards, there have been situations that clearly show his lack of maturity and responsibility, which is just another sign of his overall behavior. In particular, I'm talking about the anecdote I already shared in my post about his trip to Las Vegas. As if leaving our son with a neighbor and not telling me he was going away wasn't bad enough, he also decided to do it on a Tuesday. He was working as usual when all of a sudden, he decided he needed to go to Las Vegas with some friends. And if you're wondering what kind of friends go to Las Vegas on a Tuesday, well the kind that are just as irresponsible as he is. It wasn't a long weekend, not even a Friday or Monday close to a holiday. No, it was a regular Tuesday and he was supposed to be back at work the next day. The worst part is he didn't tell me anything until he was about to board the plane. He literally sent me a text saying something like, 
I'm heading to Las Vegas with the guys. Be back Thursday. At first I thought it was a joke because it seemed too absurd but if I'm telling you this it's because it wasn't. I couldn't believe he was capable of leaving work just like that to go party. But he did. And to top it off he used the excuse at work that he was sick. He called his boss the next morning and said he had a fever and couldn't even get out of bed. So there he was in Las Vegas drinking and gambling while everyone at his job thought he was homesick. He was also supposed to take care of our son that afternoon. So he left him with the neighbor and didn't even wait for me to get home. I remember him calling me that night after spending the whole day with his friends. He didn't feel guilty at all. He told me he needed the trip because work had been too stressful and he deserved it. As he spoke, I could hear the sound of slot machines and his friends laughing in the background. It was surreal. The worst part is the next day, his boss tried to call him several times about something work-related, and instead of answering Mike turned off his phone so no one could reach him. He decided gambling and partying were more important than any responsibility he had. And the most impressive thing is that when he went back to work on Thursday, he acted like nothing had happened. He showed up with a fake cough, saying he had been really sick and had barely dragged himself out of bed. This kind of behavior wasn't a one-time thing, and while it didn't happen all the time, there were enough situations like this for me to realize he wasn't someone I could rely on for anything. Now, seeing how he's treated our son in this situation with the gifts and video game console, I realize his lack of responsibility and maturity is still a major problem. As for my plan, I've been seriously considering speaking to his boss about this. I still have the exact dates of when he took that trip to Las Vegas, and I'm sure his boss has no idea what really happened. Mike was lucky that time because he wasn't fired, but I think telling his boss about his irresponsibility might make Mike think twice before pulling another stunt like this. It's not that I want to ruin his life, but honestly, I want him to understand the consequences of his actions. Using our son to get material things is a line he shouldn't have crossed. I'm tired of being the only one taking responsibility for everything, and if he won't learn in a more reasonable way, maybe he needs a harsher lesson to understand. However, before I take that step, I want to try talking to him one more time. I'm considering confronting him again, but this time, I want him to return the things or at least pay me back for what they cost. It's not that I want the money itself. What I want is for him to understand that he can't use our son as a tool to get what he wants. My son worked to earn those things, and it's unfair that Mike kept them as if nothing happened. Of course, I don't have much hope that Mike will agree to pay me or return the items voluntarily. I know how he is and I know he'll come up with a thousand excuses, but I think I should at least try before considering something more drastic like talking to his boss. If he continues to refuse, maybe that will be the only way to make him realize what he's doing is wrong. Maybe facing a real consequence in his professional life will finally make him understand that he can't keep avoiding his responsibilities. I'm going to talk to him this week and see how it goes. I don't have high hopes that he'll change his attitude, but I at least want to be able to say I tried before taking more serious action. After my conversation with him, I'll update you all on what happened. Stay tuned for my next update, you'll definitely hear from me again. Update 2. Here I am as promised with the update many of you have been waiting for. It's been three long intense days, but I finally have something to share. I don't know if I should call it a small victory or the start of a bigger mess, but I assure you the situation has taken an interesting turn. And all because Mike brought it upon himself. As I mentioned in my last update, I was determined to confront him one more time before making any drastic decisions. So I called him yesterday afternoon. I laid everything out pretty directly. I said something like, Look Mike, I want to be fair. Give me back the things you've been using, or at least pay me what they cost. I'm not asking for much, but if you don't do it, I'm going to tell your boss everything. I know what you did to go on that trip to Las Vegas, I have the dates, and believe me, your boss isn't going to be happy when he finds out you were gambling while pretending to be sick. I had no idea how he would react, but what he did was far worse than I expected. First, he let out a sarcastic little laugh, as if what I was saying didn't matter at all. Then, in the most annoying and immature way possible, he told me that he wasn't going to do anything I was asking. He basically gave me a lecture about how I didn't need those things, saying, what do you even need a video game console for? Are you going to start killing aliens on some distant planet in your free time? I responded trying to keep calm, even though I was boiling inside. It's not about the console, Mike. It's about our son. He worked to earn it and you're the one using it all the time. Does that seem fair to you? And then it got even worse. He told me, with the typical arrogance I know all too well, that he wasn't going to return anything because those things were for a father and son to enjoy together. He gave me a ridiculous speech about how he was fostering a father-son relationship with those objects and that if I didn't understand that, then the problem was mine, not his. Then he added, Besides, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to call my boss. 
You know you won't because that'll just make you look like a crazy vindictive woman, and you don't have the guts to go that far. You like making empty threats but in the end you always back down. That was the moment I knew. He had dug his own grave. With every word that came out of his mouth, it became clearer that he wasn't going to change, that he was still the same man-child he's always been. I held myself back from yelling at him over the phone, but my response was clear. Perfect. If that's what you want Mike I'll be calling your boss tomorrow, and I'll tell him everything that happened. Let's see if you're still so smug after that. The call ended there. It's not that I like the idea of involving his boss or getting mixed up in his work life, but I can't keep letting him get away with things time and time again. He's not going to learn unless he faces the consequences of his actions. Tomorrow I plan to make that call. I have everything ready, the messages, the dates, and all the information I need to show his boss what he was really doing while claiming to be sick. I don't know how his boss will react, but I'm pretty sure Mike isn't going to come out of this unscathed. Maybe finally, he'll lose some of that arrogance. I know some of you might think this is too drastic, but I'm tired. It's not just about the console or the other things, it's about everything they represent. Update 3. Things have gotten much worse, but not for me. As many of you already know, I was ready to take action and called Mike's boss, just as I said I would in my last update. What I didn't expect was for the consequences to be so significant, nor for the situation to take such a drastic turn. To be honest, while I anticipated that Mike would have to face the consequences of his actions, what actually happened has been even more intense than I imagined. I can now say with certainty that Mike is in serious trouble, and he has no one to blame but himself. As I mentioned I got in touch with Mike's boss. It wasn't too difficult, as I had met him before at various company parties when Mike and I were still married. It was one of those relationships where you know who's who, but you never go beyond the typical hi, how are you, at social events. Luckily, that made it easier for me to get in contact with him. When I called I said something like, Look, I know this isn't easy to hear, but Mike went to Las Vegas while he was supposed to be sick and left all his work pending. I have proof of all of this. The boss, although surprised, didn't seem as shocked as I had expected. He told me that he knew Mike well enough to know that, while he was a good worker most of the time, he also had a tendency to not be the best employee. He mentioned they had some minor issues with Mike over the years, but Mike had always managed to deliver what was necessary, so they never had a real reason to take serious action against him. However, what I was telling him went far beyond his usual slip-ups. Here's where things get interesting. It turns out that Mike's trip to Las Vegas wasn't just a personal act of irresponsibility, but it had a direct impact on the company. Apparently, the work Mike left undone was part of a major project, one that was meant to secure a big, valuable client for the company. According to his boss, they were in the process of closing a contract worth around $300,000. For the deal to go through, there were documents and proposals that needed to be submitted by a specific deadline, and Mike was the one responsible for making sure everything was ready. The worst part is that, by pretending to be sick, Mike left the entire team hanging. He didn't fulfill his responsibilities, and as a result, the company wasn't able to send those documents on time. Sure, when Mike finally returned from his illness, he managed to submit the documents, but by then it was too late. The client, who at first was only slightly annoyed by the delay, ultimately decided not to go forward with the contract. In short, because of Mike, the company lost a $300,000 business opportunity. The boss told me he understood that sometimes employees get sick, and as a company you have to deal with those kinds of unforeseen situations. However, what he couldn't tolerate was the lie behind it all. Finding out that Mike wasn't actually sick but had been in Las Vegas having fun and gambling, while the company was losing that client, was a whole new level of irresponsibility. At this point in the conversation, his boss told me something that really surprised me. Not only was he thinking of firing Mike, but he was also seriously considering suing him for breaching his work duties. He explained that the company had clauses in their contracts for situations where an employee, either intentionally or through extreme negligence, jeopardized the financial well-being of the company. And Mike's decision to fake an illness and abandon his work was a clear example of that negligence. The boss asked me to send him all the proof I had. Right now I'm waiting to see what happens, but I have a strong feeling that Mike is finally going to get what he deserves. Update 4. Surprise Mike called me this morning furious. I'm not going to lie, the conversation was so surreal that I still can't help but laugh a little when I think about it. After everything that's happened, I think I needed that moment of catharsis. This morning, just as I was making myself a cup of coffee, my phone rang. It was Mike. My first reaction was honestly to ignore the call because I knew it wouldn't be anything good, but I decided to answer. And as soon as I said hello, he exploded on the other end of the line. Not even a second passed before he started yelling, saying things like, How could you do this to me? You messed with my job. 
Trying not to laugh because I was fully expecting this reaction, I played innocent and calmly responded, I thought you were too sick to work. I didn't know a fever could be cured by gambling in casinos and drinking in bars with your friends. As I listened to him, I couldn't help but think about the irony of it all. He kept yelling, telling me I had no right to meddle in his work life and that I had ruined everything. But that's when I dropped one of the most obvious truths which seems to be hard for him to grasp. If your job was so important to you, Mike, then you shouldn't have gone to Las Vegas in the first place. It's not like I forced you to take that trip. In fact, I gave you plenty of chances to do the right thing, and you didn't take any of them. I said that as calmly as I could because let's be honest, I was in the right. But that wasn't the end of it. What he said next made it even clearer why I had to take such drastic measures. Unable to contain his anger, Mike said something along the lines of, If I lose this job, I won't be able to keep paying you child support. What are you going to do then? I had to hold back from bursting out laughing. I replied, That doesn't worry me in the slightest. When you get another job, the child support debt will be waiting for you with open arms. It's not something you can avoid just because you lose one job. So don't worry, you'll pay it eventually when you can. I think that was the blow that irritated him the most. He went silent for a few seconds, as if he was processing what I had just said. But instead of calming down, his voice got louder again. He yelled, They're suing me for $20,000 and you know what? You're going to have to pay. At that point, I couldn't hold it in anymore and burst into laughter. I said between chuckles, Mike's sweetheart, I don't have to pay a single thing. I wasn't the one who decided to go to Las Vegas on a random Tuesday, as if that was more important than showing up for work. That was all your decision, so if anyone has to pay for that, it's you, not me. He was so angry that, for a moment, I thought he might explode through the phone. But I wasn't done yet because I still had one more card up my sleeve. With full sarcasm, I said, But don't worry too much. Now that you'll have so much free time, you can enjoy your new video game console even more. Maybe you should start looking at the bright side. This could be a great opportunity for you to save some money. Instead of going out and spending it at bars or on any other impulsive nonsense, you could stay home and catch up on those video games. I can perfectly imagine the look on his face when he heard that. He was so furious that he could barely speak coherently. His yelling turned into incoherent, angry babbling. That's when I decided to end the call. There was no point in continuing to talk to someone who clearly didn't want to take responsibility for anything. I went back to my coffee with a smile on my face. Maybe I was a little cruel to him, but honestly, after everything he's done, I think he more than deserved it. I gave him more chances than he deserved. I gave him options to fix his mistakes, to return the things, to act like an adult and a good father, but he refused to take any of them. If anyone is to blame for how things have turned out, it's Mike and no one else. Update 5 it's been several months since my last update. Finally, everything has come to a conclusion. And as I predicted, Mike had to face the consequences of his actions. He lost the lawsuit, although he didn't end up paying the full $20,000 he initially thought. In the end, he paid $13,000, which is still a significant amount, especially considering that he had to find a new job after being fired. What's most interesting and a bit ironic is that while he was unemployed, he had to sell the video game console. Yes, the very same one he insisted on keeping and for which our son worked so hard. So, in the end, not only did he lose his job, but he also lost the toys he had accumulated. As for child support, just as I warned him, he had to make up for the months he couldn't pay once he got a new job. So for now, he's catching up on all of that, which is a relief. Although this has been quite the roller coaster, I'm satisfied with how things turned out. I hope I won't have to post any more updates, but with Mike, you never really know.